on this episode. Wow, look at this heart. This is not what I expected. Kate makes a shocking discovery about precious cat Yuki. Heart not good. Heart not good. It's a hard one for me as a vet because last time was very scary. Yeah. An agonising decision when Audrey's high-risk patient, Blaze, needs urgent surgery. You're going to be brave for us? Mummy's very, very worried. Number one and the stupidest thing you've ever seen a puppy swallow. And Scott can't believe what greedy Dexter has eaten. That is what it is. A drawing pin. You may Come on, there's your girl. Hi, Kelly. Hi. Hi, Dexter. At Scott Sizerworth practice, Kelly has rushed in with five-month-old Dexter, fearing her beloved puppy has swallowed a pin. 100% eaten a pin. I'd say 99.9% .9 sure he's eaten a drawing pin. Dexter really looks like butter wouldn't melt. He's such a gorgeous boy, but he's been pretty silly today. He's gone to work with mum and he's decided to swallow a drawing pin. Gosh, you total numpty. He had it in his mouth, but he gobbled it at the same time. It sounds <laughs> bonkers. But I'm going to bring him downstairs with sedium and x-ray. Okay. And just see if it's in there. Yeah. All right then. Come on then, you big numpty. There's no drawing pins that way. No. All right, say bye to mummy. Oh dear. Oh, bye. <laughs> see you soon. All right. Okay. See ya. see ya. Come on. Always wanted a puppy. So I thought I'd finally, um, you know, make the move and get it. It's hard work, and obviously, as you can see, everything goes in their mouth. So it's quite a, it's quite a hard task. But um, he's absolutely gorgeous. So he's uh, he's definitely worth it. Come on, little man. I honestly can't believe, despite him being a puppy, that he would swallow a drawing pin. But if he has swallowed it, it really can be quite dangerous. What we'll need to do is just sedate him mm -hmm. because he's super bouncy and then we'll take an x-ray and just make sure for 100% that you have swallowed something that ridiculous. Yeah. Hey, ready? Oh. Sometimes in some cases when puppies swallow foreign bodies, you can give them time to see if they'll pass through the system, but not with a drawing pin because it's got that sharp end it could lacerate or cut through the gastrointestinal tract at any point. And so it really does need to come out straight away. Dexter gets a little bit upset when we give the anesthetic to him, but he is a baby, he's a young dog, and it's a stressful situation. Let me set up there, please. Yeah, thank you. Hey, silly boy. Okay, ready? X-ray. Chances of finding a pin. A hundred percent. That is what it is. Off we go for an adventure. <laughs> In Sydney, Sally and her daughter Rebecca are taking three-legged Blaze to see Audrey about a concerning lump on his remaining rear leg. That's it, Blaze. Good boy. Come on, buddy. I was about 12 years old when we got Blaze. And I had been pestering my whole life for a dog. We were just lucky that I fell in love with Blaze and so did Mum and it was just like a dream come true. <laughs> making me walk so much. <laughs> he's great with other dogs, he's great with all people. You look into his eyes and you feel like you're looking into his soul. He just yeah. has this beautiful face and brings us so much happiness. This way, where's mum? Come on. But happiness has turned to worry as the lump on the 13-year-old fox terrier Cross's leg has deteriorated since his last treatment with Audrey. Hello. Hello. Hi, hi, Blazy. How are you going? 
going? How's he been going on his leg? Uh, he's all right, but still, yeah, causing still him a bit of grief. Like <laughs> all right, we better get you in and have a look. Come on in. Yep, through here. I'm concerned because that remaining back leg has got this lump that's growing. And it's not only growing, it's starting to cause pain and discomfort. So we really need to try and save that back leg because otherwise we've got a dog that can't walk. So last time I saw you, I gave him an antibiotic injection. Yeah. Still got a little bit of a sore spot in the middle. You see that dark area? Yeah. The blood supply to the middle part of that lump can be compromised and so it starts to die. Audrey is worried the lump could be cancerous. Could be a vascular neoplasm, so a tumour that's arising from his blood vessels. It's still growing and that's going to be a constant problem and of course we can't keep giving him antibiotics. Blaze really is running out of options here. That lump isn't getting any better. We've given it as much chance as we can to heal on its own. And if we leave it, he's not gonna have a quality of life if he can't walk on his remaining back leg. And that's your one precious back leg you've got left, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. But surgery to remove the dangerous lump will require a general anaesthetic, sounding alarm bells for Sally and Rebecca. Last time when Blaze had anaesthetic, he was getting a dental procedure. He'd never been under anaesthetic before. Halfway through the operation, his heart rate dropped really low. Last time was very scary. Yeah. And on file, not to give him a general anaesthetic again if we don't have to. A couple of years ago, we put Blaze under general anaesthetic for something very routine. But unfortunately, about 20 minutes into the surgery, he started to crash and we almost lost him on the table. We had to give him some emergency drugs to get his heartbeat back and lucky he made it through. So it's one of those things, is it worth putting him under and that risk of him not making the general anaesthetic to take off that lump? It's a hard one for me as a vet because last time was very scary Yeah. and I know it's not easy for you guys because if you leave him here, he may or may not come back. Yeah, yeah. But obviously I'll try everything in my power to make sure everything goes smoothly. Of course. Yep. Yeah. We'll be in soon, Yuki. In Sydney, Carly and Ross have brought 14-year-old Yuki to see Kate worried about a recent change in her behaviour. We've noticed over the past couple of weeks she's struggling to like jump up on things that she would normally have no trouble with like our bed and like the bench and the dining room, the couch, things like that. It's almost like she's lost the oomph in her back legs. Yeah, you relax Yuki. The couple adopted the Chinchill and Persia cat two years ago and are totally smitten with their fluffy white companion. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely obsessed with her. <laughs> we are obsessed. <laughs> I couldn't imagine my life without her now. No. And I wonder what it was like before. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, how are you? Hi. Hello, I'm Dr. Kate. Hi, I'm Ross. Hi Ross. I'm Carly. Hi Carly. And this is Yuki. Little, little Yuki. Beautiful. Yeah. Come on in. Yuki is a really special little cat and these guys have given her an amazing home and they have loved her. You would never know that they had only had her for a year or two. Hey Yukes. Yeah. There you go. Would you just like to come out on your own? <laughs> Welcome. And why have you brought Yuki in? We've noticed over the past couple of weeks that she's like struggling to jump and sometimes I've seen her cry and fall. And so what kind of height are we really talking about here? Are we talking about, say, like the height of this console no, table? No, like... Smaller? Yeah. Like, so actually quite low. Yeah. Yeah. And in the past, she's always been able to do it. Perfectly. Yeah, Jumps exactly. Right. Kate starts the physical examination to discover why the spring has gone out of Yuki's step. When I extend that hip, do you see how she mm. just goes, oh, and she starts to shake a little yeah, bit? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So she's never going to say, like, meow. Yeah unlike dogs because they won't tell you that they're in pain. So you guys, I can tell you even without an x-ray that she has arthritis. Yep. That it would be worthwhile just taking a little blood sample and just checking her liver and her kidneys. Yeah. The other thing that would be worthwhile is for an x-ray just to get a bit of an idea about how bad they are and where the actual pain is coming from. 
Her arthritis is reasonably significant. I do want to take some x-rays because first of all, I want to have a look at her spine and see if there's actually any pain coming from her spine. Then the second part of it is I just want to rule out that there's nothing else. So something that I wouldn't say to these guys, it worries them unnecessarily, but at the end of the day, like I do need to rule out that this isn't actually some kind of cancer. Bye, goodbye. Bye, Bye baby. Bye, gorgeous. She's adorable. Right. Right. Bye. Thank you so much. A silly furry doofus. In Isleworth, Scott urgently needs to remove a drawing pin that young puppy Dexter has swallowed. It's very serious, uh, this x-ray, because um, you can see how sharp that is. That point at any moment during its movement down the gastrointestinal tract can puncture and go through, leaving a hole, and then bacteria can go out into the abdominal cavity and you can get peritonitis and the dog can die. So it's very serious. Time is critical, with the sharp pin in danger of moving deep into Dexter's stomach. Okay team, so let's go fishing. Scott is attempting to locate and remove the pin using an endoscope with a camera, hoping to avoid invasive surgery on the five-month-old pup. Can you see it? I can't see it yet, but I can, so I've got food contents now, at least. Trying to find a drawing pin in the gut of a puppy that has had a full meal is the proverbial finding a needle in a haystack. What colour it was. Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh my God, there it is. Look at that. Looks like it's already poking in. Is that it? What do you guys think? See what I, I mean? Like, so. yeah. It's sort of... It's hard because it looks a bit like, like a bit of saliva, but it's too still. So I can see it. And now I'm just trying to put myself in a position where I can grab it. So Jason, can you open those jaws for me, please? I'm getting so close. Okay, go. Oh, I've got it. Hey, buddy, I've got it. Can I just move your head? Ugh. What is it? It's gross. It's so disappointing. So disappointing. Oh. All right, let's switch that. Well, that was really good going though. It was good team effort. Okay, so now we have to just have more of a look around. Okay. Oh, it's gotta be in here somewhere. Scott knows time is critical for Dexter and begins one final search for the pin in a desperate attempt to avoid surgery. Come on, just be there somewhere. Okay, retract. Unfortunately, I've done a good survey of the whole area and I just can't find this needle. It's a real shame that the endoscopic extraction didn't work and the drawing pin is still in there, but now it really is a ticking time bomb. This is something that can cause significant injury and Dexter needs to have surgery and he needs to have it now. Hi. Hi Kelly, it's Scott the vet here. Hi. Hi. So yeah, I can't get it out with the endoscope, unfortunately. Um, so yeah. at this stage, I think it's probably better that we just go straight in uh, and and get it out. Okay. 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 Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you so much. All right, Kelly. No worries. Cheers. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Okay. I can tell you even without an x-ray that she has arthritis. Yep. In Sydney, yep. Kate is conducting tests on 14-year-old Yuki to find out if the ageing cat has any serious medical issues besides chronic arthritis. Good job, Yuki. Looks nice and yellow. Yeah. Let's go have a look at this. First, a urine test to check for diabetes, urinary tract infections and kidney disease. It's always really important in old cats to make sure you're thorough and that you do a complete workup. There's no ketones, there's no glucose. No. So I can't see any evidence there's anything wrong with the kidneys. Next up, blood tests. Such a good girl. Good job, well done. So, unfortunately, the ProBMP is abnormal. 
Heart not good. Heart not good. Heart. I'm really disappointed to find out that she has something wrong with her heart. This is something that changes Yuki's life. Now instead of just dealing with one problem, we're actually dealing with multiple problems. Are you ready? Yep. One, two and three. X-rays will shed further light on Yuki's heart condition and her arthritis. X-ray. Wow, look at this heart. This is not what I expected. This heart is enormous. Yes, there might be some arthritis there, but she's lived with this arthritis for years. And why all of a sudden now has she not been able to jump up on things? So it makes me think that potentially what we've got here is some kind of compression in the base of her spinal cord. The other possibility here, very sadly, is if she does have a heart condition, is that she's actually throwing clots. And the reason she can't jump up on things is because her heart is not functioning properly. We've got to start looking at the heart. Yes, there might be some arthritis there, but actually Yuki's problem right now is her heart. So Yuki, I really hope that this little arthritis treatment makes you feel better, yeah. kid. Kate is giving Yuki a revolutionary new treatment to help with her arthritis. Well done. Well done. Oh, so good. So good. Now she faces the difficult task of telling Yuki's adoring owners, Carly and Ross, about their beloved cat's heart issue. Yeah, always a worry about the x-rays and, and I guess the blood results. Yeah, yeah. a bit nervous. The first thing that actually jumps out in these x-rays is the enormity of her heart. Mm. Because there is a possibility that as a result of heart disease that she's actually throwing microclots. Okay. Pretty bad things. Yeah. they often fatal. Yeah. So we have a cardiologist and what I'd like to do is get her booked in with him. Yeah. Yeah. We need to figure out what is going on with this heart before we actually plan a future for Yuki because we could be dealing with congestive heart failure. It could be that she's got a tumour. What's wrong with it, we don't know until we actually get her to see a cardiologist. Look, it is a shock, but I, I feel like when we, we took her in, it was like we knew she was an old cat and we would like take yeah. her and give her a good home yeah. for as long as yeah. she needed it. Yeah. And that's what we that's continue to do. Yeah. 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 I think we'll yeah, just have to see what the yeah. heart specialist says. Yeah, we'll do whatever they need to, yeah. to do for her. Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, I am, I am worried. Yeah. Bye, Bye, thank you so much. See you Monday. Look after her. Oh, we will. That right. Thank you. So, it's one of those things. Is it worth putting him under and that risk of him not making the general anaesthetic to take off that lump? It's, it's a hard one for me as a vet because last time was very scary. In Sydney, Audrey's high-risk patient Blaze needs urgent surgery to remove a worrying lump on his leg. Mother and daughter Sally and Rebecca must make an agonising decision. So let's pop outside and have a look at how he's moving around with that leg. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then we can make a decision from there. Sal's Blaze's grandma and Rebecca is Blaze's mum and so I know that this dog is like their baby and they've loved this dog, three legs and all and hopefully they'll all agree that it's the right decision. So I really like to see Blaze walking around, see how comfortable he is on that back leg. Come on, Blaze. Come on, Blaze. Definitely still there. Are there moments where he does seem sore still at home? Yes, definitely. Okay. But he's not licking it as much since. Hey, you're a lucky boy. Such a happy dog, yeah. honestly. We just fell in love with him and had to adopt him. Stay, sit. Oh, no. <laughs> Sally and Rebecca return to the clinic to give Audrey their verdict on the aging dog they adore so much. Hey, buddy. What do you think? Yeah, it's definitely affecting yeah. his quality of life. Like, yeah. he can't. Absolutely. You know, it makes so much sense yeah. to just and look, get it out. As hard as it is, we're prepared. Yeah. The main thing is his quality of life, so... As long as we're sort of all on the same page that That's we're willing right. to take that risk. Yeah, then exactly. We'll of course do our best that he comes back tonight yeah. Yeah. with a new leg. <laughs> it doesn't hurt anymore. Hey? Yeah. Too many people love you too much. 
The next few hours are going to be really hard, but look, we gave him lots of hugs and cuddles and pats before he went in. He knows how much he's loved and I think that's the main thing. You're going to be brave for us. Mummy's very, very worried. We all are. A bit scary, but he's in good hands. This little one is Winnie. Oh. On the Gold Coast, Gerardo is about to examine Winnie, a black Labrador whose sight could be in peril after she was poked in the eye by a sharp stick. Hi. The good thing we can see straight away is the fact that the eye is still there, which is a bonus. There's a spot on the eye, right on the sort of middle, just towards the nose. Oh. The lively one-year-old was brought into the emergency hospital by concerned owner Hugo, who's also a vet. Took my little two-year-old boy out, um, we've got a farm, and let Winnie go for a run. And she did something along the way, I think probably a stick into her right eye. She had her, her eye shut, it was uh, watering a lot, and um, I could actually see blood in the, the front chamber of that right eye. I wasn't sure at that point whether a stick had actually penetrated through the cornea and actually punctured the eye itself. Hugo and his wife Bethany, also a vet, were worried for their son Archie, who formed a special bond with Winnie. <laughs> she's beautiful, she's really loving, she's really gentle. As much as I would tell anyone, don't completely trust your, your dog with a child, we do completely trust her with our little two-year-old boy. They've known each other since they were babies, and they have a really beautiful relationship that's developing. So rushed her on down here, hoping that she wouldn't lose her right eye or lose the vision in her right eye for that matter. You're going to stay still for a little bit. Just need to have a look for two seconds. Back in the treatment room, energetic Winnie is making it hard for Gerardo to determine just how damaged her eye is. Shh. I know. Well, stay still. Stay still. Stay still. Stay still. Oh, oh, oh this is going to be impossible. Oh. I don't know if we're going to get far with this, eh? We might need some sedation. Oh. It's pretty dangerous if she has any foreign material in the eye. Something may have gone through the cornea into the anterior chamber, the first chamber of the eye. So what we're going to do is give Winnie some pain relief and sedation to enable us to have a look at Winnie's eye. She's very nice and sweet, but she's very... Active? Active, that's a good word. Back leg, okay, you got ready? One, two, good girl. Once the sedative has calmed the sprightly youngster, Gerardo will try again to assess the damage to Winnie's eye. Good girl. See you soon, little blazy. In Sydney, Sally and Rebecca have given Audrey the go-ahead to operate on their beloved Blaze to remove a nasty lump on his leg, despite the little dog's high risk under anaesthetic. Mummy's very, very worried. We all are. I'm going to give him two pre-meds. I'll give him the methane first. You be good boy. So this guy gave us a heart attack about a year ago under general anaesthetic. His heart rate dropped pretty much to almost nothing. So ideally we would not be putting him under GA, but because he's got this horrible mass that's causing him a lot of distress, we're going to have to bite the bullet and put him under. Good boy. You are a brave boy. We've got everything on the ready, just in case, buddy. As they put Blaze to sleep, Audrey and Nurse Iona are taking no chances on another near-death experience. So I want to get this done as quick as possible, an hour max, and then we're out. So every minute under general anaesthetic is a risk for him. We've got atropine in case the heart rate goes too low. We've got something in case the heart rate goes too high. 
We've got a temperature monitor, an oxygen monitor, a heart rate monitor, a blood pressure monitor. One of my best nurses on hand, so everything is prepared. I'm just totally in vet mode to make sure that this goes as smoothly as possible and we get Blaze back to mum. Blood pressure's at about 110. Can you tell me when? 130. Okay, I'm cutting. Let's get this done. Every second counts as Audrey works to remove the potentially cancerous growth. I'm going to just watch she doesn't get too light. Perfect's going up. As the minutes tick by, Iona is on high alert for any changes in Blaze's condition. Iona's got her hands full today because as well as monitoring his parameters and his heart rate and his blood pressure, she's also got to measure his depth of anaesthetic. I want to make sure that he's nice and stable on the general anaesthetic, that he doesn't feel a thing, but also I don't want him to drop too deep and his heart rate drops again and potentially he could die. Blood pressure's 140. Every time I turn him up, his heart rate drops. His cough is not working. It's a lot of pressure. I know we're looking all calm and we're concentrating on the surgery, but when you've got your nurse saying the heart rate's dropping, the heart rate's going too high, he's getting too light, this whole world of turmoil in my head. How has she been getting on since we gave her the silencia? She still runs around. Yeah, she's still everything. super active. You played with her for ages last night. In Sydney, Kate is keen to know if the arthritis treatment she gave Ross and Carly's cat Yuki four days ago has improved the 14-year-old's mobility. I said, let's give this a chance to work. And if you feel like in, say, the next two to three weeks, you yep. think, mm, yeah, I haven't really noticed that much, say something, so yep. then I can add something in. Okay. But most worrying from Yuki's earlier visit were tests indicating she has an abnormally sized heart. The moment of truth, Yukes. Hey, Dr. Kate, how are you? Good. Who do we have here? This is Yuki. Okay. Today, Yuki will have further scans with heart specialist, Dr. Damon. So she was adopted two years ago by the current owners. Yep. They love her a lot. She's adorable. She has been struggling to jump up on things. Mm -hmm. X-rays have confirmed she's got very bad arthritis in her hips. Yeah. She also does have a big heart on X-rays. Okay. So we just need to check it out. Pop her down here. Take, take hey, sweetie. Back. That'll be perfect. Yeah, okay, okay. Just gotta lay down just for like a little mini. So Damon is doing an echocardiogram. He's having a look at the inside of the heart. So X-rays are really good at looking at the outside of the heart. But what Damon's able to do with this machine is that he can look at the inside, which means he can look at all of the valves, all of the different chambers of the heart, all of the different vessels. So this is the left atrium, and unfortunately it's severely enlarged. It's massive. Oh no. The enlarged chamber could be life-threatening for 14-year-old Yuki. So that would indicate a high risk for heart failure or potentially blood clots can form in the very large chamber and they can go to other organs in the body. Blood clots lodge at certain parts in the body. In cats, it's quite often in the lower back or the legs. And what happens is that they just can't walk. They come in and they're paralyzed. It's pretty concerning that her left atrium is enormous. Yeah, it's very concerning. I'll uh, yeah. get ready for surgery, we'll get it done, and I'll call you afterwards. All right, thank you so much. All right, Kelly, no worries. Cheers. Thanks. Okay, bye, bye. In Isleworth, Scott needs to perform emergency surgery on puppy Dexter to try to remove a sharp pin lodged in the young dog's intestine. It's a real shame that the endoscopic extraction didn't work and the drawing pin is still in there. But now it really is a ticking time bomb. This is something that can cause significant injury and Dexter needs to have surgery and he needs to have it now. I've never had a chance. His stomach's so full. Got it. Got it? Yep. It's drawing pin. Yeah. Okay. Oh my god. Nails. 
number one and the stupidest thing you've ever seen a puppy swallow. So, awesome news in that I've managed to find this translucent drawing pin. Uh, it had already adhered itself to the stomach wall lining, so given, you know, half an hour, an hour, it may have already started to cause some serious damage. We've got the pin out and uh, I'll stitch him up, but uh, will he learn from this? Probably not. All right, let's wake him up then. Hello there. Waking up? Come on. Dexter. 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 There we go. I know, poor boy. It's okay. It's okay, baby boy. Come on then. Let's go and put you in a nice comfy bed. It's okay. I know. I know. Right. Good boy. Have a little snooze. Good lad. Well done. This is the left atrium, that's the severely enlarged chamber. In Sydney, cardiologist Damon has shocked Kate with news that one of Yuki's heart chambers is three times its normal size. But Damon's using words like devastating and horrific and I can see that he's actually quite worried about this. There you go, sweetie. She was such a good patient. Yeah, she is a good patient. To conclude, yeah. there is heart disease, there's severe heart disease, what we call mitral valve stenosis. Mm -hmm. So the mitral valve is not opening completely and that's obstructing blood through the left side of the heart. Mm -hmm. And secondarily, we're having enlargement of the left atrium. Because blood's backing up? Essentially, yeah, right. there's a higher pressure. And there's no surgery we can do in cats to fix the malformed valve. So what you're telling me is she's some kind of ticking time bomb? Unfortunately, yeah, there's a high risk for complications in the future. That could be in the near future. Okay. But I would say it's very hard to predict when. Yuki's probably gonna go into heart failure that is going to be her downfall at some point. And the difficulty here is we don't know when. Thanks, Damon. It's right. been really helpful. Sorry about the news. Yeah, thanks. I feel like as though, you know what, knowing is better than not knowing. Absolutely. Thank you heaps. Thank you. Kate must now deliver the devastating news to Yuki's adoring owners, Ross and Carly. I don't know if we're going to get far with this, eh? We might need some sedation. Cool. On the Gold Coast, Gerardo has been forced to sedate one-year-old Winnie to get a close look at the lively Labrador's damaged eye. Yeah, and there is potentially some blood in there. See that there? Just on the yeah. remedial aspect there. Her owner suspects she was poked in the eye with a stick while running around on the family farm. Like a splinter or something on the eye. I am pretty concerned about this because we have signs of trauma to the eye and there could be some foreign material in there or there could be bacteria in the eye. Imagine having a stick with your eye. Now that she's a bit more settled, we can have a closer look at the eye. We're going to put a stain in and that stain will highlight if there's any physical trauma to the cornea, the outer surface of the eye. Oh, she looks much more comfortable now. Good girl. Good girl. Oh. Okay, then we'll flush that out. Oh, flush, flush, flush. Gotta flush it out. I, oh, I know, I know. You're such a sweet doggy. Okay, let's have a look. Is, you can see that white, so that grey kind of area in the eye, the cornea. Stay still. I know, I don't. Just checking to see if there's anything on the inside of the eye because something may have gone in or just scratched along the top. I think it's just scratched along the top. On examination, I couldn't see any foreign material in the cornea, but the fluorescein stain highlighted that there is trauma to the surface of the eye. We could see it as a bright green little line. What that tells me is that something's definitely scratched along the surface, but it doesn't tell me if something's gone inside. Something could have gone inside and come back out. Just stain it one more time, make sure. And then we'll put that local drops in there. 
Gerardo can't be sure if Winnie has sustained permanent damage, or worse still, lose the sight in her right eye. OK, one more time. There we go. Good girl. There is concern that the trauma's just happened, so the inflammation in the eye with the blood in there could get worse. So, yeah. Good girl. In Isleworth, a very vocal Dexter is recovering from his drawing pin ordeal, and anxious mum Kelly can't wait to be reunited with her special little boy. Come on, you're okay. Come on. Ready? Oh, come on, you big baby. Hi, Kelly. Here's your baby. It's all right. It's okay. He's all right. Don't worry. <laughs> He says sorry for making you worried. Don't you, monkey? Since the surgery, Dexter really has no idea that he's even unwell. He's bouncing around, he's eating like a vacuum cleaner. He is just crazy, getting into even more mischief. It's all right. So he's got through, he's absolutely fine. Yeah, I know, I know it's awful with that coat. He does, he looks ridiculous, but oh, you know, bless you. there you go to see those happy tears in her eyes. You can tell she was just so fearful and so worried for her fur baby, but now he's back in her arms. You can see that she feels complete and she's just very, very happy. These things happen. Yeah. We see puppies swallowing crazy things all the time. I know, he's an absolute nightmare, but I love it. <laughs> A whirlwind nightmare you are. Yeah. Yes, you are. Is that my thank you? Well, I oh, appreciate that. Yeah, we do. Thank you thank very you. much, don't we? Yeah. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, very stressful 24 hours, but absolutely love him to bits. So very pleased that I've got him back. All right, you look after yourself. Yeah, we'll do. All right. Thank you so much. No thank worries, you. my pleasure. So See you later, you. gorgeous boy. Oh, come All right. On. Thank you so much. See you later. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Blood pressure is 140. Every time I turn him up, his heart rate drops. In Sydney, Audrey and nurse Iona are desperately trying to keep high-risk patient Blaze stable, so a worrying lump can be quickly removed from his leg. Is okay? Yep. He's dead girl. I get the lump off, now I'm going to send that off to the lab, but the next step is thinking about how I'm going to close this. What's the heart rate? 100. Okay. Audrey has safely removed the dangerous lump. Down to three. It's heart rate dropping. But it's left a large wound and the clock is ticking. Audrey wants to keep Blaze under for as little time as possible but she's struggling to get enough skin to repair the surgery site. How long has it been since he's been under? About 40 minutes. 40 minutes. OK, we said an hour. Yep. I think I've got enough skin to close. Looks good. It's come together with pretty much no tension, so I'm pretty happy. Blaze is pretty much almost out of the woods. We're going to turn him down. So the anaesthetic part, so far OK. As I'm finishing up surgery, I'm having a big sigh of relief. Everything has gone smoothly. Iuna's done a wonderful job. I just want to get this over and done with, bandage him up and give mum a call. Good morning, sweetie. Sweetheart. Auntie Yuna did a good job, hmm? Mummy's gonna be relieved. I'm relieved. <laughs> I'm relieved. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hello? Hi Beck, it's Audrey. How are you? Hey. Everything's okay. gone well. He's just on the surgery table oh. waking up at the moment. He's got a lump off his leg and he's happy and awake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he was fine under the anaesthetic? Absolutely fine under the anaesthetic. We had every monitor imaginable on him. His heart stayed pretty stable. So I was pretty happy with how the whole thing went and his recovery. So we're just okay. having cuddles. Awesome. 
Thank you so much. That's okay. We'll see you soon. He says, hi, mum. Hi, mum. Hi, Nana. The best thing ever is hearing the sigh of relief in their voice. And I can even hear Grandma Sally squealing in the background that she's so happy that Blaze has made it. It's a big jump for joy inside my head. It's okay. It's all right. It's okay. This wait has been so hard. <laughs> I think we had to wait about three hours and then we realised he hadn't actually even gone into surgery yet. I'm ready now. <laughs> no! Hey, I'm still a bit woozy, Mama. <laughs> Anesthetic went really smoothly. We were watching him like a hawk yeah. and the lamp Whoa. <laughs> so it was actually a lot bigger than we thought it was. So that will go off to a lab and then we'll know exactly what, what it is. The bandage on his leg will come off in maybe about three to five days time. Thanks for being good on the anaesthetic. Mm -hmm. oh, he's wonderful. Okay, let's send you home. Yeah. All right. Yes, very pleased. It all went well. Sit down there. What a balloon. Today has been a massive day. It's not very often that you have to do something like this where the owner's saying goodbye to their pet and his life is in your hands. I'm really proud of myself. I'm really proud of the team. So good job today and we can all go home and sleep well. Okay, one more time. There we go. Good girl. On the Gold Coast, Gerardo has placed a special stain in one-year-old Winnie's right eye, hoping it will show if she's done major damage to her sight. Okay, let's have a look now. Now that we've repeated that, now I can see that there's a green area here, right on the cornea, and that indicates there's trauma to the cornea. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. I'm just gonna try some magnification and see if there is a splinter or something. I don't think so. Looking from the side, and making sure there's like nothing. Penetrating from the side. No, it's got some blood on the inside of the cornea, which is just trauma. Okay, so let's put some let's local anaesthetic on top of that. And then I'll check the pressure in the eye. Patiently waiting for news of the family's much-loved Labrador, owner Hugo is nervous, despite the fact that he and his wife Bethany are both vets. As much as you plan on being completely rational with your own pet, it's definitely different. Your emotions do bubble up. And when you're dealing with someone else's pet, it's a good thing that you can generally separate emotion from your job, but it's, it's certainly harder with your own animal and that's another reason that it was quite nice today being able to hand over the treatment to the expert hands of the team here. And scoop underneath the third eyelid, those three eyelids. See if we've got anything. Nope, nothing there. There's no trauma to the eyelid there. So there's no, no more foreign bodies, which is good. I don't think there's anything in the eye itself. Gerard was confident Winnie has escaped serious harm, but does one last test to be sure he can give a welcome prognosis to Hugo. It's this magical instrument lets us know what the eye pressures are. Yeah, so we've got 23 on that side, so lucky pooch, could have been a lot worse. I am surprised, but also happy. Luck has turned in our favour and we don't need to go to surgery. Okay, let's pop her away. I wonder if she's going to walk for us. Are you going to be totally asleep? All that remains is to break the good news to a worried Hugo. Come on. Come on. Good girl. He's a little bit wobbly. So what you're telling me is she's some kind of ticking time bomb? Yeah, she's going to die of heart disease very likely. In Sydney, Kate is meeting Ross and Carly to discuss Yuki's heart diagnosis. Hi, Yuki. So Yuki has a heart condition that no other cat has. She has what they call mitral valve stenosis. Okay. Essentially that's where the mitral valve is not opening fully all the way. 
And what that's creating is sort of backflow of blood that's pulling down in that left atrium. So it's causing the left atrium to stretch, but there's also this turbulence that's happening. And the more turbulence there is, the more chance that we're gonna get a clot or we're gonna get some kind of embolism. Unfortunately, in Yuki's case, it's gonna be her heart that does kill her. How quickly that is, nobody knows, right? That could be three weeks, that could be three years. And really what I want for Yuki is I want her to be as comfortable as she possibly can be in the time that she's got left. These guys, what they show me, they're just lovely, lovely people and they take it all in their stride. But I have this feeling that probably somewhere down the track, they're going to be pretty devastated about this. We're gonna put Yuki on some blood thinners. Kate hopes medicine will prevent a fatal blood clot, but she also wants Carly and Ross to do regular checks at home to detect any onset of a clot. So what I'd like you to do is over a minute, measure her breathing rate. So her up and down is one breath and it needs to be under 30. And so yeah. if the breathing is above what it should be, mm -hmm. do we just call you yeah. and yeah. get yeah. okay? Yeah. Yeah. Her breathing rate over a minute is going to tell us, is she having a normal amount of breaths or are they too high? Once it's high, we know that there's possibly some congestion and we need to intervene. Deb, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. No worries. So I feel then, like as though that, you know what, like even though I can't necessarily give her a new heart, uh, yeah, we can do the very okay. best we yeah. possibly can with what we've got yeah. and hopefully we can get her to live some, some yeah. more life. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Right. So good. Thank you. Carly and Ross, they love her a lot. And when it comes to pets that are sick, the biggest act of love is giving them a good quality of life and being able to have the bravery to let go when that time comes. Come on, come on, you know this? Time to go home. On the Gold Coast, one-year-old Winnie has been cleared of a serious injury to her right eye and is ready to be reunited with her loving owner, Hugo. Hugo, here we go, mate. Hello. She's a little bit quieter. Huh? <laughs> Quickly pop her up on the table. We'll just show you what we looked at. You had a really good look as well. Hugo is also a vet, so Gerardo is keen for him to examine the Labrador's damaged eye. Yeah, so there's like a little line which goes, starts kind of low and it goes up on an angle like that. Yep. But it's, it doesn't look like it's just scratched along the surface and go any deeper. Must have been a bit of a bump to cause the high femur. Yeah, yeah, I know. You were a bit sleepy, miss. Nice. <laughs> that was definitely what helped us to be able to do the exam. Yeah. She was all, like jumping all over us. Yeah, so. I can imagine. We'll be managing her from here and Gerardo's kindly dispensed some medication to help dilate her pupil and make her eye a bit more comfortable. If you're concerned mate, give us a call. We're open all night. So thanks mate. Thank you very much Dave. We really appreciate it. Winnie got wet. Yeah. Winnie's wet. She's a, a beautiful dog, very active. This is the second injury on the farm she's had running around. She's still a, very much a puppy so we've probably got to be a bit careful with her running around the paddocks because she seems a little injury prone. <laughs> Today. Two weeks after three-legged Blaze underwent risky surgery to remove a nasty lump, Audrey is making a home visit to see how he's progressing. The main thing I want to see with Blaze today is that he's running around, he's comfortable, the area has healed nicely and there's no recurrence of the lump and no infection. Hi Beck, hi Sal, hi Blazy. How are you guys? How are you? Good. Look at you handsome man. And he's walking well. He's walking perfectly. Come. I'm looking at Blaze and he seems very comfortable, topping around. I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. Good job. Yay. Yeah, he's back to his normal self now, which is lovely. Because mm. he's always been such a happy dog. Yeah, and a smiley um. dog. Ah! Ah! Good boy. Sally and Rebecca have been nervously waiting to find out if the lump on Blaze's leg was cancerous. Fingers crossed. It should be all good. Yeah. 
Now, it did come back as a nasty lump, so a malignant tumour. Mm. With those lumps, they tend to be locally invasive, which means they invade the tissue that they're sitting in and they tend to grow quite deep and quite wide. So even though it's come back as a really malignant, nasty tumour, we've got it in the nick of time. We got it all out and there's very, very little chance that it's spread internally. Oh, so it's good perfect. news for Blazy. Yeah. It's a huge relief yeah. to think that we'll have him for longer as he is the happy, happy little mm -hmm. beautiful dog that, yeah, he yeah. that we love. Down, down. Good boy. I'm glad that we took that chance because we got that horrible cancer out of his leg and out of his body. Oh, got him back. Does your favourite vet have what it takes to be a star on Bondi Vet? We're looking for the best vets from around the globe to join our team. Let us know at bondivet.com and you could win an incredible once in a lifetime holiday to Bondi Beach. Stay in luxury accommodation overlooking the iconic beach and meet the stars of the series. To enter, tell us in 50 words or less why you think your vet should join the Bondi Vet team. Enter now at bondivet.com. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content.